السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the special embryology lectures I'm gonna cover in this presentation the development of the pituitary gland I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansour University, Egypt The objective of my presentation will be First, I'm gonna discuss the development of the pituitary gland and then I'm gonna discuss its anomalies. For the anatomy of the pituitary gland, it is a small endocrine gland that is attached to the undersurface of the brain by an infundibulum or a stalk. It is located in the cella turcica, which is a depression in the uh, sphenoid bone. Anatomically is divided into anterior lobe or adenohypothesis and a posterior lobe or neurohypothesis. Superiorly, it is related to the diaphragma cella, which is a dural fold that separates the anterior lobe from the optic chiasma. Inferiorly, it is related to uh, the air sinus inside uh, the sphenoid bone. Laterally, it is related to the cavernous sinus with its content. Posteriorly, uh, related to the dorsum cilli, and behind it lies the basilar artery and the pons. It is supplied by the superior and the inferior hypophyseal arteries, uh, branches from the internal carotid artery, and its venous drainage into the cavernous and the intercavernous sinuses. For the development of the pituitary gland, also known as hypophysis cerebri, we should know that the pituitary gland is ectodermal in origin but derive it from two different sources. One source is called Rathke pouch and the other one is called infundibulum. The Rathke's pouch is derived from the epithelium of the roof of the mouth while the infundibulum is derived from the neural ectoderm of the diencephalon. First, the Rathke's pouch grows upward from the roof of the mouth and the infundibulum grows ventrally from the diencephalon of the developing brain. Later on, the Rathke's pouch forms a vesicle and it detaches from the roof of the mouth. So its stalk will narrows and finally detaches from the roof of the mouth like this. The cells of the anterior wall of the Rathke's pouch undergo extensive proliferation and form the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland while its posterior wall will uh, proliferate more slowly to form the intermediate lobe of the pituitary gland. The Rathke's pouch now will give us the anterior loop or the adenohypophysis and it is divided into the following parts. The pars distalis will form the main part of the anterior loop. The pars tuberalis will wrap around the stalk of the infundibulum. The pars intermedia will form the middle loop and the space between them is called the pituitary cleft while the infundibulum will give us the posterior loop or the neurohypophysis and we can see a recess of the third ventricle here it's called infundibular recess of the third ventricle and so this is the final shape of the pituitary gland this is the anterior loop or adenohypophysis formed of the following parts pars tuberalis here wrapping around the stalk or the infundibulum pars intermedia will form the middle loop of the pituitary gland and pars distalis will form the main part of the anterior loop the infundibulum or the posterior uh, pituitary is formed of the infundibular stalk and neurohypophysis. 
The pituitary gland lies within the cella turcica and just superior to it lies the optic chiasm. For the anomalies of the pituitary gland, we have the following. Either a genesis or absence of the pituitary gland, and this is of course incompatible with life. Or the opposite, we have duplication of the pituitary gland, as uh, seen in this coronal section of uh, this MRI. You see that there are double arrows, points at two different pituitary glands. Or we can have a tumor of the pituitary gland, which is called craniopharyngioma. You can see a big cyst at the cella turcica made by the pituitary gland. Or we have ectopic posterior pituitary gland. If you look at this sagittal section in the MRI, you can see a bright spot here uh, at the base of the brain and another one at the cella turcica. And it is uh, associated with pituitary dwarfism. Or we can have what is called pharyngeal hypothesis, where you can see a cyst hanging uh, at the roof of the pharynx. It's not related to the adenoids or the pharyngeal tonsil. And also you can see uh, the cranial pharyngeal canal is still open, which leads upward to the cella turcica. So this anomaly occurs if the pouches stalk did not obliterate completely and there is a remnant of the craniopharyngeal canal and the accessory or ectopic pituitary tissue can be found there. This is the end of my presentation. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like and share.